and welcome back to another Sunday evening here, nine o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, could be a different time depending on where you live, but welcome to the Standard Array, a show that I do with my co-host here, PB Plays Inside. Um, I like the little new uh, punchline we've got here. Welcome to the Standard Array, where everything's made up and the points don't matter. I really actually like that. <laughs> Um, so, and I like the idea that I'm Lucian, the spotty streamer, part-time GM who dreams of full-time world building, have ginormous or big ideas, but I have a minus 10 initiative. So a lot of it doesn't get done, but PB, go ahead and introduce yourself to all of those people jumping into our, uh, chat channel there or let them know who you are. Well, hello everyone. I am PB from PB Plays Inside. You can find me on that on literally everything. I'm a variety game streamer. Occasionally, I play TTRPGs on literally every channel but my own. Um, I do occasionally stream other things like making a TTRPG myself. That's happening. Um, big fan. And that is all I have. <laughs> and that's it. That's just us. All right. And that's it. That's <laughs> abrupt stop. Just show, like my life. Right this there. Is, this is going to be a great show. So we've had a little bit of hiatus. Um, we're still working on format. We're still working on times and what we're going to do, but we're back at it, and we wanted to do a show tonight. Um, if you've missed any of the other shows from the Standard Array, you can always go back onto my YouTube channel and take a look at some of the previous ones. We have a couple of good interviews with some other YouTube and content creators. We have some great discussions with me and PB talking about many different things, and tonight we decided we wanted to talk about an RPG. So what we're trying to do on some of our shows, we want to talk about, we want to pick an RPG, a, a tabletop RPG, and we just want to talk about it and discuss it and really kind of bring up awareness about it. Um, some of our shows are going to have a, a relevant discussion on maybe some type of, you know, mechanic or thing that's happening in the RPG community or some big news item. Um, and then some of the sessions or episodes that we'll do will be interviews with other content creators that are out there. People that are new to GMing, people that have good GMing advice. Those are the things that we want to bring here on the Standard Array. And we're ho our hope is that with the Standard Array, we can help you expand your RP knowledge past just Dungeons & Dragons. Not that we don't love Dungeons & Dragons because me and PB play a ton of Dungeons & Dragons and we still love it, but we definitely wanted to show that was going to start highlighting some of the other great RPGs that are out there. So I think we're going to jump in. Um, I think what we... This is going to be Masks, a new generation. So this is a Powered by the Apocalypse game. I'm looking over here because I have the actual book here that I was going to kind of show everybody. And this is a really fun game. It's obviously one I've talked about on my channel quite a few times. So I'll bring that over and try to not glare everybody out. There you go. I think you can see it. It's a really good book. And I know a ton about it. But let's start with PB a little bit. Let's let's jump into PB. How much do you know about it? What have you heard about it? What have you seen on it? Um, what makes it interesting that you wanted to find out more about it? Might want to play it at some point. Uh, tell us a little bit where you're at, and then I'll jump in with my deep dive of it. So the only reason I've ever heard of Masks in New Generation is because of my co-host here, Mr. Sir Lucian. He got really hyped about it when Magpie asked them uh, to DM at Gen Con, I think it was, last year. Correct. And so since then, he's been raving and raving about it. He loves it. There was a short game, I think, played maybe one or two games that have been played about masks that I wasn't around for. Mm -hmm. And so what I do know about it is from what I've read, I have the PDFs of what it is and I've read through some of it. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, the thing that attracts me the most is I'm a huge, I really like superheroes. I like them a lot. And not only do I love superheroes, I love superheroes when they're not good at anything just like when they're just starting off when they're like well i have all these things i could do but i don't really know how to use them and so i love that entire growing process that happens with them uh it's something we've gotten a lot with the cw characters from mm -hmm. the dc universe we got that a lot from teen titan seeing that whole group complex come together uh which is great the original teen titans yep, yep. cartoon haven't watched the new one can't talk about <laughs> yeah, that one not yet <laughs> not yet and so i really love 
having young because we've all been young we've all been there we know all the awful decisions we've made thinking they were the best idea in the world like that is what you had to do everything when you're young is just like so right there you have to fix it right now otherwise the entire world blows up right right and with young superheroes you know sometimes that's sort of kind of the case sometimes the world could blow up if uh you don't make the right decision so it's this cool dichotomy between personal and and like fighty and superhero mm -hmm. your superhero persona and your not fighting superhero persona and so in this game i really like it because or i really like the concept of it i guess because whenever you read through all the like the here's the quick start guide for you to learn how to play masks you read it and you're like yeah this is they 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 get it they get it you have things that are that aren't just like here's how you punch and use all your cool powers and blah 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 you have that and you have a whole slew of things you can do there but you also have the other part of it the more empathetic part where you're like well you're scared you're scared and now you have to figure it out or you're angry you're so mad you have to like deal with that it's not just something you can gloss over like ha it happens a lot in other rpgs you you yourself role play that out but the game doesn't really have mechanics for your emotions unlike unlike in this one where yeah it's a big part because it's a big part in being a superhero mm -hmm. and so reading through it i really loved that they talked about that also in the uh when you're reading about it in like parentheses uh it's just like just like in like teen titans young avengers and you know all these other uh cross-platform comic book series in which or comic books i guess in which there are young people being superheroes which makes me like super excited because those are some great comics and some great storylines so i'm just saying so i really like masks a new generation as a concept and reading through it i really like what they've done though i've never played it before so i don't really know how it works in action mm -hmm. but because i've listened to lucian talk about it a ton i have to assume it's a great game mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely uh, really liked the game. It was interesting when I found it. Uh, I think the very first thing that drew me to it was I was looking around on Drive Through RPG at all the RPGs that were out, and it was even maybe a year or so ago that they had put theirs up there that you could purchase the PDF, and it was the artwork. So like when I saw the artwork from the artist who does this, and I'll I'll say the name because it's really good. So the artists for these were the. Uh, illustrations were by michael lee lunsford there was some additional art and coloring by brooke carnivale layout was by daniel solis um and then the art director was marissa kelly and they did a fantastic job because when you look at this art style it stands out i mean i want to watch this show just this scene right here could be my saturday morning after i run my saturday morning D, &D show I could throw on a cartoon and I could watch these characters do something. They're just, they're so expressive. There's so much character to them just looking at that. And that grabbed me when I first saw it. So then I'm thinking about going to Gen Con last year. It's kind of last minute. And I see a tweet go out from Magpie Games, who's the kind of the publisher of several of these type of games. And they said they needed GMs. And so I was like, okay, I'd like to GM. And they asked me, what games would you do? And when I looked at their list, I saw Mass, a new generation was on there because I didn't even know that was the publisher. And I was like, oh, I want to run Mass so bad because I love the artwork and everything. So they let me run the game. I learned how to play the game before I got there. Um, I had a great time with all the people that showed up to the table. And I agree completely with you that I love superheroes. I mean, me and you just talked probably last night or yesterday for at least two hours about Infinity War, right? So we're we're huge, and we were talking about CW shows, and we were talking about character arcs and comic book storyline arcs. So we, we got pretty nerdy about it just yesterday, and that had nothing to do with even the show. So we, we definitely like superheroes. And this one is a specific type of superhero that I think is the best type of superhero. It's the teenage, young superhero, new to their powers storylines so it's the spider-man storylines it's the teen titans it's the robins it's the um uh that the show that we were really liking uh recently with molly and um the runaways on hulu 
I mean, that's this, right? That is this booklet in a nutshell. And it even says in the kind of the beginning of it that there are many types of superhero stories you can tell. This one's geared towards a specific one, and it's geared towards the teenage story, the teenage team-up story. And so if you're trying to tell that story, this is the perfect game for that. If you're trying to tell the story of, say, um, Superman, you're trying to tell the story of, uh, I don't know, Batman when he's in his 40s or Old Man Logan or any of those, this one has, you can do it. That All these rules can always be made to do what you want, but it's not necessarily where its strong point is. And there are other games that are maybe a little bit better rule-wise to give you that storyline you're looking for. But this one's all about, I want to play X-Men from the fact of Xavier's just brought in those teenagers to the school, or I want to play Teen Titans, or I want to play these kinds of things. And it's about the interaction between you and your teammates as much as it is beating up and punching villains and bad guys, right? So I love the concept. So we both, I think, are really key on this concept, and I definitely recommend you read through it if you can get it. It's not a very expensive book to pick up as far as RPG. Um, just the book is all you need to play. It has everything you need in it. You can download for free uh, the playbooks. So when you talk about characters uh, in the Powered by the Apocalypse game, and this is like one of them, um, it has like playbooks that you can play. They become kind of your characters. But when you were looking at those, let's jump into that a little bit because we, we know the concept. We know what what kind of game we want to play. What, what kinds of characters are we going to be able to play in this, right? So let's let's bring it and, and kind of link it. And, and for those that haven't tried it out, give them a really, what am I going to be doing when I play this? So did any of the characters jump out to you when you were looking through it? Well, as I look through it right now, which if you guys, again, I was talking about how how much these guys get it. Looking through all the lists, because I think you get 10, 10 or 15 characters to choose from, um, types of characters to choose from. Uh, there's a little section right at the end of their bio that says like inspiration for this character. Mm -hmm. And for example, uh, there is, let's see, let's pick a good one. Something everyone will know. Oh, no, I just saw one. Uh, like Janice. The Janice? Yep, the Janice. The Janice so the everyone. description the description of it says, wake up, breakfast, school, work, homework, sleep, repeat. It burns you up being stuck in this life, unable to make a real difference. That is until you put on the mask. And then you can become someone else, a hero. And then at the end of it, inspirations for Janice are Miles Morales from Ultimate Spider-Man. We have Blue Beetle, Jamie Reyes from Jung Young Justice. We have Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Yes. Then we have uh, Thor, or Jane Foster's Thor, which is qu yep. a great series going on right now. It's wonderful. It's great. I love it. Go go buy it. It's wonderful. And then we have Batgirl, Barbara Gordon. Again, person after my own heart. Love Batgirl. Especially... Um, Oh, the new, uh, not Overwatch. You know, you know the storyline. <laughs> yeah. I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> um, Batgirl. <laughs> and so I love seeing, I love seeing that at the end of these. Because I'm like, oh yeah, of course, this is very Miles Morales. Or yeah, that's very uh, Thor. Not, not, uh, not the other Thor, but Jane Foster. And I'm just, I think about all these cool things that you can do. And like seeing people like The Outsider was another one of my faves because I'm a huge Starfire fan from uh, from uh, Teen Titans. Love Starfire. Yeah, and coming down here, I'm like, they better have Starfire. There we go. Yep, that one there right there. <laughs> and then Miss Martian, come on. And as uh, Lucian was saying, saying from the Runaways, Zavin. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So those are some of my favorite ones. And I love how uh, they break it down, especially if you're not someone who's super into superheroes and are just getting into it for the first time, who maybe you don't know who Marvel Boy is or the Young Avengers. You have no idea what series that is um, because you can't find it on a Hulu or a Netflix, you know, because it's in comic book form. Uh, they gave a great description of like who that person would be. 
uh, what would you be feeling like going through this? It's a very like combining, if we were to think about it in D&D terms, as a lot of people do, it's very much like combining background and a little bit of race at the same time. You're combining those two and you're getting your you're getting something to start the hamster rolling, right? Getting yeah. an idea of who that character is and what you you can do. Yeah, and what in a very specific do. way too, right? Because like that mm -hmm. was perfect what you said. So if you have a D and D background and you might say when you pick a class in Dungeons and Dragons, it's not necessarily background and race to what you go to first for the most part. A lot of times when you start thinking about a character you're gonna play in a campaign the first wheel that turns is your class. And what is class really? Class are your abilities, right? The things you can do. Whereas when you're picking a, a hero here to play or an archetype to play, a playbook to play, it's more about how you feel, how you became a hero. It's not about who can fire off lasers. It, you know, there's not the laser hero. There's not the, the, the super strong hero. There's not all these other things. They classify them in a way that's very different to give you this idea of think about how the person feels first, the things that are going around them and things that are happening to them. That's the person you're playing. You're not playing the, you know, I control rock person or I can fly person or I can do these things. All these people can have lots of different types of powers and they can, you can mix and match the powers. The powers almost don't matter as much as the interactions that are happening with why you are who you are. Like you mentioned the outsider, which is really good. I love that. I just love reading the, the things to this. I, like when I'm sitting at the table and I'm going to run this for people, I read this out because it's so good. I'm like, if you want to play a, an outsider, you're not from here. Your home is an amazing place full of beauty and wonder, but there's something to this place. They're talking about earth, something special that you're missing back home, something human. Like you're fascinated with humanity, but you're not from here you're not from earth you're not an earthling but there's something about these dirty little hairy apes that move around and even though your cities are more technologically better and and more vibrant you want to be here because it's just something different for you um so yeah you'll be hanging around at least for now and then it just goes into uh these really good descriptions of what you're going to be before you even get to what kind of powers do you have like density control or heliokinesis or stunning beauty and pheromones uh, radical shape shifting martian manhunter anyone alien weaponry tele uh, telepathy and mind blast and you can really technically probably even do more than what's there these are just good guidelines to say this is some good ideas for what you can do um, so characters are really cool characters are built around how you feel, how you fit into the world, maybe how your powers came to be, or the things that you're, like your Janus is your quintessential, I want to keep my real life going, and I want to keep my superhero life going, and I want neither one to be above the uh, or below the other. Like, I want to be good at it all, A plus and all of it. I can't let one harm the other in any way. And that's a struggle, right? Because you're that's a duality that you have to play, role play in the, in the session. So that is so good to have strong character identity to play in a game, just to be able to sit down and go, I get it. This is the person I want to play. And such a cool opportunity for the GM too, right? Like it's yeah. like if you if you are the comic book fan, this is it. This is this is what you want to run because you get to run your own through lines. You have your own plot lines. You get to have you know the Peter Parker who's going to high school, the homecoming uh, storyline, where they're in high school and you get to be all those characters there and give all these struggles of uh, how am I going to how are you going to meet this other person. Are they going to they going to be important in your life? Are there someone they someone who's going to know who you are, right? Or like, how do you keep your secret? Or how do you go to school and do these other things? How do you, uh, you know, pay for where you live? You know, if you're a little bit older, how you get to do all of that, and then at the same time, you, you know, you could be like arguing with your landlord. Like who hasn't been there, right? I argue with your landlord, being like blah blah blah. Suddenly there's this disturbance you know, a few blocks down and you're like, fine, you win. I got to go. And you have to run off. And now all of a sudden, you know, in your personal life, you're 
worse off or you're with a friend who doesn't know who you are and it's like all of a sudden there's aliens falling from the sky and you just you gotta book it or the opposite right you're, but you still you have an exam alien. on friday yeah exactly <laughs> exactly or you're the alien who just came from this other huge super technological world you get to be the dm who's just like and you see this this thing it's so yeah you've seen it in books and uh what it does is it heats up food manually you do it yourself <laughs> and it's just you have to you get to introduce these situations for your characters and you yeah. just get to sit there and be like what are you going to do what are you going to do what are you going to do <laughs> it's it creates this really exciting uh very optimistic uh you know like mindset or like i was saying very like homecoming spider-man rather than like logan wolverine right or you can run the Logan Wolverine, but you know, if it's kids, you sort of don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's not that you have to fit every superhero story into this style, this RPG. This one's just really good at telling that certain one that, that young new to the powers um, type superhero. They talk about another character that's big is Halcyon city. That's the kind of the setting they give you in the book. So they recommend that, when you start out now, obviously you can always homebrew whatever you want. You can play in any universe you want. You can mix and match as much as you want. But if you're just playing from the book, they, they give you a great vibrant city to deal with um, called Halcyon City that has generation after generation of superheroes that came all the way from the 50s. And they've got these different ages. So there's like the Bronze Age and the Silver Age and the Gold Age. And now you guys are kind of like the new, the new generation. Like you're the fourth um, generation of heroes and having to deal with that right because there's a big difference between mutant powers happen a year ago now there's a bunch of people that have mutant powers that's like heroes the tv show right because we're right there when all these powers start to happen what is that storyline but this one's about heroes have been around for so long now it's just like commonplace they, they joke a little bit about halcyon city has the best construction crews because halcyon city has had so many superhero battles against villains they've become super professional at rebuilding buildings within a day. So like something gets crashed down, the, the construction crews show up after the fact, and that building's almost back up to new and running again, and, and new people are getting their offices or their apartments again the very next day because they're just that super good at being able to rebuild the city. So just little quirks and things like that. Um, so the setting is wonderful. The artwork in the book drives you into thinking about all of these great stories you could tell and gives you these ideas of these great characters you can play any character you can think of because it's not it's not a power-based system you don't have to think about oh you know i really want to play a spider-man but they don't have a web slinging character so i guess i can't really play that i'll, I'll play one of the other it's, it's not about that it's about you know you just pick the the different types the other thing is when you download these they come out as just like a piece of paper and then they fold into these really cool playbooks that you just sit there with as a character sheet which i just think is great and it's very easy to take a look at and see how some of these things work um it's all laid out really well um, i printed it out on a, on a little bit nicer piece of paper these were my extras that i had left over because i ran the game at our uh marmalade dog this year and we had a great uh, graybeard was in the session we got to meet some new people and we played a really good game um and i just love it so the material you get with it is pretty good um it is a 2d6 style game so you need d6s and it's one of those where you roll 2d6 and you add a stat of some sort usually like a plus one or a plus two or a minus one or a minus two um and then depending on how well you roll you you have certain things can happen on what you're doing so usually if it's like a six or lower is a miss and then something bad happens um and then usually like from a seven to nine is what you wanted to do happens, but there's probably um, a, a compilation, uh, not a compilation, uh, starts with a C. <laughs> what am I missing? It's a, uh, shoot. When something bad happens. Um, Conflict. Um, Why can't I think of this? It's a, uh, 
But basically, you get what you want, but there, there, there's one bad thing that happens also. Complication. In, there you go, MJS October. Help me out. That's I was comp, 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 and I couldn't get to it. But yeah, complication. Taxes is good too, Sky. <laughs> complication. There it is. So complicate. You know. So let's say you wanted to, um, you wanted to shoot a object above the villain. And you wanted it to fall onto the villain. And then you roll this seven to nine. So you kind of get what you want. But then as that falls, maybe it has a power line connected to it. And it and it pulls something else down that then falls on one of your friends or falls on one of the um, near one of the hostages or something. So all of a sudden you kind of got what you wanted, but it didn't quite go exactly the way you wanted it to. And then if you roll a 10 or higher, then you, you really get what you want. You know, it was a really good roll at that point. So it's a really simple system, 2d6, um, very powered by the apocalypse style system. Uh, very simple to learn. Uh, when people do things, they have moves. So moves are things like, I want to run up and punch somebody. <clears throat> I want to, um, help one of my teammates. There's a lot of names for them as far as uh, what you're doing. So there's like unleash the pow your power. And there's, um, if I go to back to them, I, I should have probably got the book open to that spot. Uh, so different types of moves. So yeah, basic moves that people can do. And then you have your character moves. So each character comes with a set of different moves they get that are specific to them. So very simple to play. Very good game for theater of the mind. You don't necessarily have to have a mat and miniatures, although you could. There's nothing that says you couldn't be moving people around and having a cool 3D style map out there if you wanted. I really want to do this on uh, Roll20 where I put all this stuff in and allow people to play. It'd be really good. Um, so great material. They give you good... Oh, here, here's the thing right here. They give you these great sheets that are called GM sheets or player sheets that have things on them like, here's all your player moves, your basic moves, directly engage a threat, unleash your powers, comfort or support pierce the mask there's team moves um how to start the session how to end the session there's things about conditions things that happen to you like uh you get scared you get angry you get um afraid those kinds of things and they give you negatives to certain stats um there's adult moves so there's a big thing in this book about you still kind of care what the adults think about you so they can affect you. So like if you knock a building down trying to stop a villain, but then your parent comes over and, and is mad at you because of all the destruction you did, that affects you a little bit. Yeah, you, you were good for stopping the villain, but look at all of this mess you made, right? Things like that. So you can there's a lot of moves that they can do to shift your, your labels and stuff. Labels are like your stats. And they all come kind of predetermined. Um, so it's really good. I mean, there's other materials out there that you can use to enhance your game. Um, so I have something here like, um, let me show you, let me show you these. These are called, these are like cards that they, that you can get. I got these at the Gen Con. They were pretty cheap. Actually, they gave them to me for running the game, but you can get them. And what they are is like, maybe you want some villains and I'll just bring some out here real quick. So we'll just grab, just grab a couple and we can do this. Go. We're going to mess with my camera focus here. Ah, the Hydra. So things like that. And we'll just do a random one here. We'll go like a little arc knife. There you go. Some really cool kind of looking stuff. And then on the back of these, this is all you really need for a bad guy. So even if you were making your own and they have the rules to make your own, you don't really need much in there to figure out how to use and play these. Um, and so that's kind of cool. They've got uh, influence deck. So you can, when you have influence over somebody, you can give influence to them. And influence means you care what they think about you. And you can get pluses to your roles and things based on that. So, and you can give those out. So I can have an influence over PB's character. Or PB's character might have an influence over me. Um, and then I'll care, you know, what they think or how they see the actions I'm doing, or I'm trying to, I'm trying to impress them. I'm trying to, you know, do things that I think they, um, would approve of and not disapprove those kinds of things. So lots of good, which is great. And they also in the game talk about involving the other generations talking mm -hmm. about, Oh, you know, 
the compare and contrast of, oh, this is your legacy. Your, your mom, dad, they're the hero. Or your great grandfather was a hero and it skipped a generation and now, you know, you're the hero or whatever. And then there's the similar sets of powers, right? Oh, you're super strong and can fly. Oh, you know, we had one of those like 20 years ago. <laughs> and it's like, what can you learn from that? Or how can you, the, you know, wanting to live up to that, wanting to be better. And the ones where you could probably have some of that, you know, were bad people who had the same power set as you did and they were the villains and now you come up and now now people are like well yeah you're the hero now but what about later you know so you have to live with the past and it's a great thing to bring into the story as a gm um i guess you could do it as a player too but for the gm that would be pre primo stuff right there that's <laughs> top shelf stuff to take yeah, and there's there's plenty of material out there that you can find um, out on Drive Through RPG, and I'll probably put some links in the video so you can go and check them out uh, when this goes up on YouTube. But there's they've they've done a few expansions, um, so there's a few things out there that you can find as far as uh, more content, more playbooks if you want to get past just the basic book. Even though the basic book is just so good, um, the best way to find them is I think putting in just Magpie Games. Um, and then they have, do. yeah, just all their stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love it. New settings, more stuff on Halcyon City. Um, I went and got all the stuff. I went and bought all the different things because I wanted to play around with a lot of the, the different playbooks. It's a, it's good for a one shot. It's good for a campaign. There are some sh other shows out there that have played masks. I know Adam Coble has run his crew through a mask game. Um, I think it was on role play, I think is where they played it. Um, you can see some other people playing it. You can go to my channel and you can look at, uh, I've got three videos up right now about how to help GM, um, masks in case you wanted to maybe run it for your group or your friends. Um, and so you can just really dive into it and I really dive into it kind of much deeper than we'll probably cover here. We're, we're kind of getting into an overview of it, but it's a, a great style that's very niche very um selective of what it's trying to do and that's why the rules are really good at doing it they didn't try to make a system that could cover everything they tried to make a system that covered the type of superhero storyline they wanted to tell and when you do that it just it just is really good um i know that the uh brendan conway is the is the writer um, I had him sign my book, which was really cool. Really nice guy. I got to meet him when I was at Gen Con. Um, he kind of was organizing the different games and things that we were playing there. And just a fantastic um, group of people to work with over there. If you, you can get it from their website, you can go to Drive Through RPG. If you want to get the PDFs, you can just order the, the printed book. The printed book is really good. I keep showing it because it's just really good. It's a, just a really nice well-made book that's held up over me flipping through it a million times and having it at the game table and playing you only need two two-sided here's another thing that's interesting that you may not know um the gm doesn't roll any dice the players do all the dice rolling which is really nice so sometimes that's kind of it's a little bit like Numenera in that way. Numenera is one of those other systems where you don't roll, the GM doesn't roll the dice. The players do all the dice rolling, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's that, that piece. It allows you to focus more on the scene. It allows you to focus on interactions between players and nudging them or prodding them to, to get involved or to do something um, and to work together, the type of thing, because you're not having to worry about, you know, dealing with the other 15 NPCs that you have. Um, like sometimes happens in our D and D games all the time. <laughs> um, there's, uh, advancement. So you, you don't just start out as like, you're just this hero and then you never move, you know, you can get more powers. You can actually get powers from other playbooks. So if you like something that's going on from one playbook to another, there's a way for advancement to do that. Advancement comes through when you fail. It's another one of those things that you get experience through failure, which I really like in a game system because if you roll that one, there's some games out there that Numenera is a little bit similar in that way where you roll a one, you get an XP. 
right? And it's just saying, yeah, you fumbled and yeah, you really messed it up, but you're going to learn from that and you're going to be a better, you know, character or whatever you are after that. So let's give you the XP and that's going to help you move forward. And that's kind of the same here where your XP can come from, from your failures and such. Um, it has cool mechanics that have to do with conditions, influence, and labels. Those are kind of like your attributes that can move around a little bit. They can shift depending on how the outside world views you or how you view yourself. Um, you can play a character that is really self-doubting, really um, feels insecure, um, has fear, has absolute fear. Um, something that you don't typically play in a lot of RPGs because in a lot of RPGs, I mean, this is what's funny is you're trying to play the hero, right? You're trying to play the person who is not afraid or the person who is the hero, but this is a superhero game, right? So it's just funny to even use that word. These are the heroes, but yet have all those emotions and really play that out. Um, I like it a lot. It's a super good game. I don't think there's anything else mechanically that you need to know about it. It is a Powered by the Apocalypse game, if you've heard of those before. Um, they are a very similar genre of style game. They deal with quick rules to get going. Lots of world building happens with your um, players, so you can ask them about how the world actually shapes up or what things happen. Um, it doesn't just have to be the GM coming up with it. And... Um, it's a very lightweight RPG system, uh, very adaptable to playing with kids. Um, so this is definitely one of those games that I think you could play anywhere from young adult all the way up to I play it, you know, and I'm, I'm just an old dude playing it um, type thing. Um, so, so run me through a, a, a quick combat situation, like set up a quick scene and explain to me how the combat works as as you're in the scene, you versus the villain. Yeah, yeah. So what ends up happening is, and I love the way they talk about this in the book. They talk about frame it like a comic book. So as you're describing things, talk about like, okay, we move to this page. And on the first cell, we see the, the front of the jewelry store. And you then at that point, you might point over to one of your players and say, Hey, what's, what's the name of this jewelry store? Give them an end to what's going on. And they might, you know, they come up with something. You're like, okay, so we see the front window of the jewelry store. We see shadows moving in on the inside. We see a little flashing light up in the top corner. An alarm has been sound. And then our next panel flashes back to PB's character. She's playing the Janice and she has this really cool character and you're in math class and your watch starts beeping and you picked up that there's a, a robbery going on just four blocks from where the school is. What do you do? And so the, the character has to then say, oh, okay, let, let me, how do I get myself out of, what's my, my way of getting out of class? How do I even do that? How do I change into my uniform or my outfit? Because people don't know who I am. And the, you let that whole scene play out of how they're even going to get there. And we talk about it. So then we're there, right? So we get you there and you're like, okay, you're, uh, you're outside. You've just arrived. None of the police are there yet. And you see shadowy figures breaking glass cases on the inside. And it looks like they're grabbing stuff out of these cases. You're standing right on the outside. The door is wide open. What do you do? Right. And so as a character, you just describe what you want to do. I mean, what does your character want to do? They want to use a power. Do they want to sneak up and go in? Do they want to analyze and, and get a good read on the place? You know, so there's like these moves you can do that talk about gathering more information or just go in and directly start punching somebody or, you know, I'm going to unleash my powers. I'm going to use a, a, a powered blast of some sort to knock somebody out. So you tell me what you want to do, and then we follow the move, right? So if it's a move. Now, that doesn't mean everything you have to do with a superpower is a move. So doing simple things that are normal, you know, I, I run up and I jump through the glass. That's a superhero thing. We don't need to roll anything to do that. I jump in through the glass, and I try to punch the very first dark figure that's breaking glass. So if you were to tell me that's what you were going to do, then we'd say, I would say, okay, so this sounds like you're going to directly engage the threat. That's the name of the move, right? So then we just look at the move and it says, 
all right, we're directly, and you tell me how you're doing it. You're like, I'm going to try to do a roundhouse punch or I'm going to do a super fly kick or whatever it is. And then we look at what the move is. So we say directly engage the threat. So when you directly engage a threat, you roll 2d6 plus your danger stat. So you would look on your character sheet and you would have a, a label that says danger and you'd either have a minus two, a minus one, a zero, a plus one, a plus two, or a plus three. Those are the only numbers that you can possibly have. Can't go any higher or lower. And let's say you have a plus two, so you roll your 2d6, you add your two, and then we look at what it says here, and it says um, on a hit, so that means anything above a six, you trade blows. So we're both going to hit each other, right? So you're going to hit them, and they're going to hit you right back. On a 10 plus, you get to pick two of these items that are in the list. So it says like you could either choose resist and avoid them hitting you. You could choose take something from them. You could choose create an opportunity for one of your allies, or you could choose to impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. So if you roll a 10 plus, you get to pick two of those. So you might say something like, okay, I want to make sure I avoid them hitting me back. So I hit them, but they hit me back. I don't want them to hit me back. And I want to frighten the opposition. And then I take that and I say, okay, so this that one you just punched, they're, they're running for it. They're out of here. You freak them out. The other one turns and you notice in their hand is some type of ray gun. And it looks like it's a frost gun. And he's going to shoot a frost beam at you. And oh no, it's cold snap. You didn't realize there was a villain here, a super villain. And then we just keep going with the scene. And then your teammates come in and they come crash the party. And then more villains or henchmen or whatever crash the party. And we just, we take it from there. So that's how a scene works. I mean, that's, that's playing the game right there in a nutshell. Very cool. So masks overall is a super cool game that is that gives you everything that you don't want to homebrew in a different system <laughs> it is written specifically for playing in this way if it interests you this is your game like lucian said perfect for kids it's perfect for really anyone whether you are a superhero fan or not whether you're a comic book fan or not um though i mean at this point who isn't who doesn't like a superhero at this point so many of them in the world um so it is great in all of those ways. It's, uh, it's I, I mean, it's only a book, so it's pretty cheap overall. It is super easy to learn. It's a, like you said, great theater of the mind. Or if you have someone who's artistic in your in your life, they they'll have a ball with it. I'm sure anyone who's sitting there listening to you play this game, it's going to get some un- phenomenal ideas. Um, it's just a 2d6 system. Anyone can play it. Anyone can pick up those die and go. Mm -hmm. So easy to play, really cool concept. It is, you know, well-researched. It is really cool and, um, it's newbie friendly. So uh, what else don't you want from, or what else do you want from your RPG system? So overall masks. High up there on my list of things to play. Absolutely. Yeah. And things I would recommend anybody else play. <laughs> That's just so good. Oh, it's so good. It's a really good system. Um, really fun to play. And play at the tabletop. Play online. I think you can do it anywhere. You, in, uh, in Anyway, I was looking for a price, but I didn't see a price on there. Um, I'm sure it's not that expensive. I'm sure you can go to drive through RPG. I'll put a link up on drive through RPG. We have an affiliate code that if you want to go and purchase the RPG, you can do it through our affiliate code, which would be pretty cool. Helps us out. You get a great RPG and we just love that you, you know, are looking at something that we think we've had a lot of fun with. And I'm, I'm definitely going to run some of this on the channel. So if there's at a point where I'll probably run it with some subscribers, uh, we got a few more, that have come in over the last month and I'll probably contact them to see if they want to play a game. And I've been, I've been wanting to play mass on the channel for a while. So hopefully you check it out. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. If you have any questions about it, you can always send them to me or PB. Uh, you can use our Twitters, which I'm uh, at Sir Lucian gaming and in uh, PB's at PB plays inside. And we'll answer your questions. Cause we're super, you know, we're super geeks about this whole superhero thing in this game in particular. So we definitely help you out with any types of questions. So it Heck looks yeah. like looks like we want to talk a little bit about in our show. We also try to talk about some other stuff that you might be interested in. There's some Kickstarters out there. Um, and I thought 
keeping it in the superhero theme of things, the one thing I noticed um, was the uh, Sentinel Comics RPG is the Kickstarter is going to go live on July 17th. And why it was relevant, you might have seen a tweet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off camera just one second. I, I picked up for uh, free comic book day down at my game store. I, I went down and got my free comics, but then I thought, you know, if I'm going to the game store, I've got to buy something, right? You got to go in, you got to support your local game store. Um, and so I picked up the starter set. Oh my God, as it falls apart. So this is pre um, Kickstarter at this point. It's like the starter kit, little starter rules that you can go ahead and you can play. It's amazing. I think I'm going to do like an un an unbox video of this somehow. I've got to figure out how I'm going to do it because there's a lot of cool things in here I want to show you. The, the way they put this together. It's another superhero RPG. <laughs> and I think uh, I think anybody that was really into it could definitely check out the Kickstarter. You can't find too much info on it at the moment. Um, you can get this from DriveThruRPG or you can get it at your local game store, the Kickstarter, or the starter kit. But look for the Kickstarter on July 17th to go live at the Kickstarter website and definitely send these people money because they're really putting out a quality product already. Look like you had a couple too there, PB. Yeah, I have two cool ones that are out on Kickstarter right now. And to go with really cool, just um, art style and a really interesting concept, I have Overlight. So Overlight RPG is a role-playing game of kaleidoscope fantasy by Renegade Renegade Game Studios. It is it is it's a very cool concept in which there are seven continents that are hanging in the sky stacked vertically um stacked vertically and they shine down different different colors and each color um on the spectrum represents a different almost element sort of deal right now they are at they've surpassed their their pledge goal which was 10,000 uh they're up to 28,000 but they're 30,000 uh score or their goal what is it called stretch goal that's stretch what it's called goal, yeah is uh they're putting out their art portfolio and let me tell you the art is absolutely gorgeous i it's i think they're putting it up for like their 15 dollar pledge don't quote me on that i don't know that's just what i read really quickly there so that's finishing up in eight days really cool concept fully fledged game and it's by a studio, so it's pretty safe to assume it's going to be created. Uh, the you other... sold me on it. I'm just looking at this page, and it looks so good. Oh, it looks super cool. The other one is one that I just thought was a really interesting concept. Uh, the concept of the game is that it's a non-challenge-based fantasy RPG. And basically what that means is that what you focus on in this RPG is the journey, is how you're getting from A to Z and what is happening around you, the experience, as opposed to the battle or the loot, which you still get, you still get that. But it's really based on how you get there, what happens as you get there, who do you meet, what do you see, and how do you deal with different situations to get there? So if you have to imagine it, I would imagine it like your first time in an open world um, RPG game, whether it was like, Elders, an Elder Scrolls game or a Witcher game or a Dragon uh, Dragon Age game where you just get to walk around this world and you're like, oh my god, look how cool this this whole thing looks and you just walk everywhere because you're like, what is going to happen? Is a bandit going to try and rob me? Is a bear about to chase me down? Did I accidentally punch a guard in the face and now I'm on the run? Who knows? So that is what this game, it's called Journey Away by Jacob S. Kellogg, solid name. Uh, is writing they just squeezed by their goal they have three days to go um, but I would support it it's a really cool looking game it's really cute it's adorable and if you're interested in the journey and not wanting to worry about you know reskinning D D or a different game I would highly recommend it and especially support your uh, your fledging RPG makers <laughs> Support all of them, including PB, who's a fledgling RPG maker. She's beating me to the punch. She's already designing a game, starting on designing her game. It's like it's my 2019 goal is to design a three-page RPG 
but she's going to beat me to the punch, which I love. And I think that's great. And uh, I can't wait to see some of that. Maybe we'll have some of it on standard array. Maybe she'll get to show us a little bit of it and we'll get to see it. Um, but we'll also, we'll tweet about those because we we're super excited about those projects. Um, giving creative people the money to be creative and you get a cool product out of it and you get to be creative by using their product. It's like win-win. It's like there's, it's like a no brainer type investment. It's way better than going out and spending. I mean, I should spend it on more of that and less on M and M's and buying candy at the store. Probably I should be spending like 10 bucks every month on, you know, these RPGs that are out there cause they're so good. So definitely support them if you can. Um, these are lots of great projects. If you hear of any good Kickstarters, Send them our way because we're always looking for really good stuff. Send them in uh, again. Tweet them out to us. We, we're me and PB are avid tweeters. We're always on there checking out messages and stuff. So we'll see you when you contact us or put them in the the link of the comments um, and in the YouTube channel too. If you're seeing this after the live show, all right. So I think that's what we're going to do for today. We uh, again, we have a topic that we like to talk about. We we highlight some projects or kickstarters or news that we've heard about that we think you guys would be interested in, and then that's our show uh, for today. So I think we're ready. Do you want to take us out? I brought us in. You get to take us out. Yep. So speaking about highlighting other people's work, now we want to highlight our own work. So Lucian, what are you doing outside of the standard array? What are you doing this week? Yeah, so coming up, um, I don't have a game on Monday, which is usually our Storm King's Thunder Monday, but we're on break at the moment as we let, it's been a year and a half campaign, we're letting the players breathe a little bit, we're letting the DM breathe a little bit, and we're getting some one shots and other cool, fun stuff into play. But I will be playing in a fantastic game of Tomb of Annihilation Adventure League version on Tuesday night on Anaris's um, Twitch channel. You can check that out. We start around 8 o'clock Eastern. I'm playing with PB and Nomadic, two great players to, to, to kind of riff off of in a game. We're playing Adventure League rules, so it's a little bit hardcore. We've already had character deaths. Great uh, sessions so far. Um, I'm also going to be doing uh, this week I have a Borderlands game that I'm running for friends, although it won't be posted anywhere. It is a really fun game for me to run because it's a West Marches style game and it's for friends. And I usually talk about it on my Saturday morning show, which is the next thing I do, which is Saturday morning Dungeons and Dragons show, which has been taking off. It's been really popular. Um, I've got Jordan, the PH is silent, is my co-host for that. And we talk all things Dungeons and Dragons and what we've done in our campaigns. And we talk a lot about being GMs in that. We have lots of interviews with great GMs that are out there. Just this last week, we I just interviewed uh, Jim Murphy. We've interviewed Matt Colville before. We've interviewed Ben from um, Questing Beast. All these great people that uh, are GMs and putting out good stuff. So you can check that out. And then Sunday, by the next time next week, Sunday, we'll have another Standard Array show just for you guys. Yes, yes. And uh, you should be looking forward to that show because we're going to be talking about sneak preview. We're going to be talking about Numenera or uh, Numenera Discovery and Destination. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny. Destiny. Yeah. Uh, otherwise known as Numenera 2. We don't know. We'll Maybe? talk about it next game. <laughs> yeah, we'll make, talk about it next yeah. Sunday. Um, I'm PB from PB Plays Inside. You can find me on uh, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Instagram, all at PB Plays Inside. I'm mostly active on Twitter. You can find me streaming a variety of games on Twitch. Don't have a set schedule as of yet, but my one thing that is on the set schedule is Wednesdays is my RPG making day. I'm making an RPG, a little short little guy, hopefully, uh, that's going to be uh tentatively name something like band battles in which you are a band trying to become the best you're one world win worlds you want to be the champion and so what you have to do is you have to the entire game is from you getting on the lot to the stage and what happens in between what happens while you're waiting what happens afterwards what will rattle you what won't rattle you how will you perform on stage how will you perform off stage it's going to deal with all of those cool things. It's going to be great if you want to find out more about it or if you want to be involved in the creation of it uh, over on my channel at pbplaysins, twitch.tv slash pbplaysinside around 3, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time is when I usually stream that for about an hour, hour and a half to two, depending on what the session is. Uh, this week is going to be all about 
I think I'm going to uh, figure out the structure of how uh, you're going to perform on stage and what you're going to have to do. So far, mechanics, we haven't talked about it. That's probably the last thing I want to touch. <laughs> but what we are discussing is are the bigger picture things. So next this week, we're going to discuss the structure of how you're going to perform on stage. And uh, what else am I doing? Mondays, I don't do anything. Tuesdays, I play in the same Tomb of Annihilation game with Lucian. I stream on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, Fridays, and probably Saturdays, I stream other games. Right now, I'm going through Mass Effect 1. I'm going to go through the whole series. If you've never played with the DLCs, I'm going to do most of the DLCs. Um, I'm not going to bother with a lot of the second uh, Mass Effect DLCs, because God, is it so annoying to buy DLCs from Bioware so annoying so I'm just, we're gonna go through with what i have and uh, skt is coming back soon and that's about it so thank you guys for watching standard array next week same time talking about numenera 2 question mark and if any suggestions for show ideas uh throw them over on our twitters or you can go to at standard array which is our official twitter account uh where you will find out about all our outages when we're coming back all of that fun stuff go follow us there otherwise follow us on our respective twitters and uh we'll see you in the next show bye, bye.